All right, man, 210 Boxing TV. Here I are with the one and only legendary Jim Lampley. Here for Canelo Charlo. Canelo pretty much grew up on HBO and you watching him. What do you think about the fight tomorrow and how everything is going to play out? I think it could be a great fight. Uh, I think it has uh, most of the ingredients that you look for, slightly contrasting styles, definitely contrasting experiences in the ring. Uh, I think that Charlo uh, is probably not going to be tremendously disadvantaged by the 14-pound weight jump that everybody's talking about. I've seen many situations when a guy went up and in, in weight and was better uh, because it fit <laughs> his body. He's taller than Canelo. If you're looking for a logical frame on which to fit 168 pounds, it actually is more logical on Charlo's frame than on Canelo's. So I don't expect that to be a decisive difference in the fight. Uh, and at this point in Canelo's career, we're talking about what is his historic legacy? Where does he fit in uh, a lot of very meaningful discussions about stature, most especially, is he the greatest Mexican fighter of all time? Uh, there's virtually no other identity in the sport that is more exalted to which somebody can aspire, and I think he wants to retire being seen as the greatest Mexican fighter in history, and that will require a few more quality wins, such as the one that he's seeking tomorrow night. Charlo, right? Is this more of a legacy fight for Charlo? Because if Charlo wins, what does this do for him? Well, it, it's an identity change fight for Charlo. He goes from being uh, a talented fighter whom everybody within, inside the boxing fraternity knows about, and the general public doesn't know very much. So uh, this is a potential vault upward in public identification for Charlo because he's got the opportunity to fight the number one dollar-for-dollar dollar attraction in boxing at the pinnacle of the sport. And uh, I can't imagine that he isn't motivated far beyond where he's ever been going into the ring. A win like this would probably cement Charlo's place in the Hall of Fame, right? Well, it's a little early to say <laughs> Hall of Fame, all right? You know, he's had, uh, uh, Canelo has had 63 fights, Charlo has had 37. So let, let's allow a little bit more time to play out, but certainly it would be uh, a very presentable credential. And incidentally, the quality of the fight is right there in the numbers. These two guys have combined to fight 100 times, if you look at their records and put them together. Canelo has 63 fights, Charlo has 37, and between them, they have 94 wins, three losses, and three draws. That's about as good as it gets. Neither guy's ever been stopped. Canelo has, has showed a legendary channel in his fights with Golovkin. Charlo has shown dynamic power. Can Charlo hurt Canelo? I think it's hard to hurt Canelo, as Golovkin showed you, unless, of course, there's residual uh, effect that we have not yet seen. Uh, and, you know, if, if it happens and Charlo scores two knockdowns against Canelo t tomorrow night, there are no shortage of ringside people who are going to say, uh, credit some of those two knockdowns to Golovkin and all the points that he put on the board uh, against Canelo. I don't rule out a knockdown because Charlo uh, should be quicker than, uh, than Canelo on the inside, and the punch that hurts you most is the one you don't see coming. Charlo, with the way he boxed with the Castano, do you think that's kind of the game plan he's with Canelo to try to box, box, uh, box off the back foot and draw Canelo in? It makes sense. But you never know what <laughs> fighters are going to do once they get into the ring. You never know whether the fighter is going to follow the plan that he's worked on for six weeks in training or whether he's suddenly going to come up with uh, some different idea. The roar of the crowd has something to do with that. The atmosphere of the uh, event is, has something to do with that. So uh, I wouldn't lock myself into any perception for sure of what Charlo is going to do. I know what Canelo's going to do. Canelo's going to try to box. Canelo's going to try to establish his jab uh, in a conventional way. And Canelo's going to try to get Charlo to run into a counter left hook. And with, with Canelo, right, you're talking about the greatest Mexican fighters of all time. You, you've called the Morales Barrera fights. You know, I guess we could kind of say you're an expert when it comes to the Mexican boxing. Where do you put Canelo all time? And what would he have to do to eclipse? Because I don't know if we could put him above Morales or Barrera. Yet. Yeah, I, I mean, look, uh, I, I will leave some names out because there are so many. But we're talking about Salvador Sanchez, and we didn't see the latter part of his career because he died too young. Uh, we're talking about Julio Cesar Chavez, who fought more than 100 times. Uh, we're, we're talking about Barrera, Morales, 
Marquez, all of uh, the more recent vintage fighters. There are many great fighters in Mexico with Hall of Fame resumes. Uh, and so that's why it's so meaningful to Canelo to try to achieve a, a final legacy and a record that would prompt people to say, you know what, he got there. He's the greatest of all time. Who's the best that you've seen on HBO? My, that we got to look at. Well, Mar I called Marquez, Chavez Morales. at his peak. I called Chavez at his peak on both ABC and HBO, uh, and and he was tremendously dynamic, great. If you ever wanted to see a fighter who portrayed the violence of boxing in an appealing way, Chavez was that fighter. Uh, I called all three Barrera Morales fights, and it, it would be impossible to find better fights than that uh, anywhere else. Uh, in boxing. I, I called uh, many Marquez fights, including his epic, unforgettable knockout of Manny Pacquiao with maybe the, the single most devastating <laughs> counterpunch uh, of all time. So I've seen a lot of great Mexican fighter exploits, and uh, Canelo's not done. He, he knows he's not done. So let's see what happens next. Benavidez, do you feel like that's the fight? That, okay, now we can talk about something that he's able to beat Well, he Benavides? needs to get past Charlo. But if he, if he does uh, manage to beat Charlo, then Benavides is a very logical opponent. Right. Uh, and that fight will sell here in the United States uh, in a very big way. And uh, I, I would expect that that's someone who is very high on the list of possible opponents for Canelo. Leaving off, Jim, uh, do you feel like you and the time you did at HBO Boxing, do you ever look at it when people talk to you? Do you ever feel like, damn, you know what? I really did some legendary work on HBO. Uh, I'm proud of what we did at HBO. I'm proud that I had the chance to work with uh, Larry Merchant, Harold Letterman, Max Kellerman, George Foreman, Roy Jones, Ray Leonard. Uh, those are all epically great people, and they were my colleagues. And, uh, and I, I was, in some ways, the band leader in that group. And uh, that is a, a privilege and an honor and an element of self-esteem that I will take to my grave. So, yeah, I'm very proud. Do you feel, leaving off the last question I want to leave, do you, do you ever feel yourself getting over emotional? I remember when Cotto fought Margarito after that, you couldn't even talk at the end. Do you ever feel I, like you I got so invested in boxing? I always feel myself getting over emotional, okay? I am over emotional. That's who I am. And I have tried very hard to stifle it. I have tried very hard to uh, reduce my level of emotion on the air. Very fortunately, my wife, and thousands of boxing fans have said to me, no, don't, don't do that. Be yourself, because it is your emotional passion for the sport and the way you feel about the fighters that makes your commentary special. I can't judge it. I'm just happy that that's what other people say. And the fans, we, we feel it. When you, know, when you get emotional like that, we feel it because it's like, there's nights where it's unforgivable. At the end of the night, you've screamed, you've yelled, Every motion's been let out, and you've always let it out on, you know. Cotto Margarito, I had <laughs> suspicions that night that something was wrong. Uh, in Margarito's next fight, it was all exposed, it all came out, and we realized graphically what it was that Miguel had gone through that night. Your love for the fighters, their their heart and the, their soul that they always show, was that the one thing that got you towards the emotion that, the, you know, just the way they, they put it all on the line? They're my brothers. They are... They are our partners in providing a unique form of entertainment and involvement for uh, the millions of lucky boxing fans around the world who benefit from the life lessons that are taught to them by these um, very brave, extraordinary heroes of the ring. They're all uh, great and admirable people. Uh, I love them and I owe them a great deal of my meaningful life experience. Thanks so much, Jim. Let the fans know where they can catch you. Uh, BBB.com. It's a new form of communicating during the fight. Yes, you can hear uh, the commentary on uh, Showtime pay-per-view. You can listen to Mauro and his colleagues in the traditional way. But at the same time, you've got your laptop open in front of you. You have uh, dialed up ppb.com, and you are looking at the comments that are being made in text by Jim Lampley and Lance Pugmire, and you can send your own responses and ask questions of them and be a part of the chat yourself. Right. Live chat, ppb.com. All right, thanks so much, Jim. Appreciate uh, chopping it up with you and talking. Hopefully somebody does it as good as, as you and Larry and the whole team did, and I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much.